know that your shoulders actually have absolutely nothing to do with breathing. And when you attempt to use your shoulders to help you breathe, you are actually limiting the amount of air you can draw in. But not to worry, nearly every beginner flautist does this at least once. Most people do it twice. And if you're working with an inexperienced teacher, you've probably done it many, many more times. So today, I'm going to show you all the common mistakes that young flautists make when they're trying to take a super duper big breath. But first, if I haven't met you yet, then welcome. I am the Techie Flautist and this is part four in our breathing series. And just in case you missed it, here is a quick recap and links to the other videos. Part one looked at exactly how much air we need to make a beautiful sound on our flutes by comparing the flute with a tuba. Part two explored our diaphragm and abdomen and how these areas affect our breath. Part three looked at our ribs and intercostal muscles and what they contribute to our breathing. And today in part four, we are looking at thoracic breathing or what I like to call everyday breathing. But really, I'm just referring to everything that happens up here. This is probably the most common form of breathing that beginner flautists use. But that's because it's also our natural default everyday breath. This, however, does not make it the most efficient or effective way of breathing. And in fact, it means you can only use 20% or less of your total lung capacity, which really just isn't going to cut it if you're wanting to play big, beautiful flute melodies. Now, just a quick note about our shoulders. They are a very important part of our body. They connect our arms to the rest of us and allow them to move around freely. And they prevent us from becoming stiff and mechanical like a robot. I am a robot. So when we try and use our shoulders to help us breathe and don't feel bad, we have all done this. What actually happens is we're tensing up our neck muscles, our arm muscles, and this is actually preventing us from taking a really big deep breath. The other thing that it also affects, which you probably haven't thought about, is it creates this stiffness throughout your arms and into your fingers which can actually prevent you from being able to move them super duper fast, which would be such a shame because that is one of the things that flutes are known for is their ability to play super fast and intricate phrases. So when you're breathing, I want you to think about everything around here being nice and relaxed and not clenching those shoulders and bringing them up to your face as you breathe. Usually for flute breathing, we actually try not to use our thoracic area at all because there's hardly any space here to store any air and we want our main focus to be on our diaphragm and ribs area. However, sometimes composers will force performers to play an excessively long phrase, such as Debussy's Prelude of the Afternoon Fawn. you can use this area to make your breath push just that tiny little bit further. However, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not going to do much and is not how you want to breathe for your normal flute playing. Excuse me, I have a question. I like questions, go for it. This all seems very challenging. I mean, we have three levels of breathing our diaphragm or abdomen, our intercostal muscles or ribs, and now our thoracic breathing and not our shoulders. Is there an easier way we can think about this? Excellent question. And you know what? All you have to do is think about Hawaii. You mean 
the island with amazing beaches. Yep. I don't get it. So thinking ha will fill up your diaphragm area, thinking we will fill up your ribs area, and we will then top up whatever remaining space you have left. So it should go something like this. <gasps> and now I have an awful lot of air. In fact, I have way too much air because I'm not playing flute, but that's okay. But the more you practice it, the faster and quieter you will get at doing it and the easier it will seem. Another technique you can use is actually to think about breathing like yawning. Because when we yawn, we're actually engaging all three of our breathing areas. And the great thing about yawning is as soon as you start thinking about it, <sighs> sorry, you actually start doing it because it is just a reflex action. One of the theories behind why we yawn is that when we're bored and tired, we have a natural tendency to breathe a lot more shallowly than we would normally. So our body forces us to yawn, which means we take a massively large, deep breath, bringing extra oxygen to our bloodstream and removing some of the excess carbon dioxide that has been building up in our system. Well, that's cool. So the two things you need to remember from today's video is number one, keep those shoulders nice and relaxed. And number two, when you're trying to breathe, think about Hawaii or yawning. I hope you have found this video useful. If you have them, please give it a like and share it with your flute playing friends. Next time, we will be joined by an amazing guest artist, actor, and ninja in training, Law Burns, for Breathing Olympics. So, don't forget to subscribe and switch on those notifications so you don't miss out. We put out a new video every Monday. Now, if you have any questions or if you have any really cool tips and tricks that you've found work really well for you when it comes to breathing, then why not leave them in the comments below? As a teacher, I'm always looking for new ways of explaining things and I'd really love to hear your thoughts. So until next time, happy practicing. Why is there construction work going on next door? Okay, it's finished.